And today I am talking you through three things to try when it comes to starting the day right for children with emotionally based school avoidance or school phobia or school anxiety or whatever we want to term it. Um, children who are struggling to come to school because it feels like a challenging or scary place for them. So number one is about the reception, how the child is meted and greeted on their arrival. This matters because it's a really big deal for these kids to get into school. Just literally showing their face is massive. So when they get there, they need to know that they've done the right thing, that they've come to a place where they are wanted, where we feel that it's a delight that they've made it in, regardless of what else has been going on in the past. Today, we are happy that they are here. The people who can get involved with this include particularly your frontline staff, especially if this child might arrive at different points during the day, um, but any staff who might be around in that meet and greet phase. So if you've got any staff who stand regularly on the playground in the mornings, for example, they need to know to reinforce these messages if this child does come to school. And how? The key here is to focus on the here and now. The child has showed up today. They're here. This is fantastic. We don't worry about what happened yesterday or last week or last month or last term. Right now, this child is at school and that is fantastic and we want them here and we are delighted. So what is this going to look like in practice? Well, first of all, we need to talk with our frontline staff or other, other kind of meters and greeters about exactly what's going to happen when that child arrives late. If they come at a funny time, what are we going to do to make them feel we're delighted that you're here? What will we say? What will we do? Where perhaps can they go? Next, as a slightly more general exercise, it can really help just to remind ourselves about this child. We might not be like really familiar with them. We might not have seen a lot about them, but what do we miss about them? Why are we actually happy that they're here? Perhaps you're their classroom teacher and you've missed their cheeky sense of humour or they are really a fantastic contributor when you're doing art projects or whatever. Whatever it is that you like about this child, focus in on some strengths and actually just tell them, I missed that. I'm really pleased that you're here because we've got this great art project coming coming up today and I could do with your ideas about colour in order to make that really work. Remember what you miss about them, zone in on their strengths and say those things out loud to them. And then finally, we need to decide what doesn't matter. Which are the battles that we want to try and win here? Number one battle is enabling this child to thrive in school, to get here, to want to be here, to feel warmly welcomed. So if that child is late, if that child is not wearing the right uniform, if that child hasn't done their homework, if there are various kind of transgressions, which might be an issue generally, we need to think about, do we really want to bring these things up right now? What we really need is for our child to feel, I got here, I did it, I'm wanted. And so going into those other things, generally not a good thing. So let's try if we can to overlook them. And again, this needs to be communicated well with other frontline staff. So for example, if the child turns up halfway through the day, disheveled, late, etc., the first thing that they need to hear is, oh, Mark, you're here. That's absolutely fantastic. We're so pleased to have you rather than, Mark, where have you been? Your tie is wonky, etc., etc., etc. Thing to try number two is routine. They all begin with R today because pookie. So uh, routine. So this matters because if we do the same thing every day again and again and again, it gets much easier to do it again. So this is about habit forming. Essentially, I'm a big fan of creating positive habits. It just takes all of the danger out of it. So a child who's scared about coming to school, if they can just do it in the same way every day, it feels impossible on day one. It feels almost impossible on day two, on day 56, it feels kind of okay. So we just keep going with doing the same thing every day to make it a little bit easier, to take the guesswork out and to teach their anxious brain that I did this thing before and actually nothing terrible happened. Who needs to get involved? Again, your frontline staff are so important when it comes to your um, children who are anxious about school. Anyone there on the front line must know how to support these children. Get them involved in your training, even if you don't normally. They are your biggest ally and your biggest asset here. They will make the most difference for these kids. Also, form tutors, class teachers, parents and carers also, because they, of course, will be involved in that morning routine. And that routine is likely to start a long time before the child gets to school. You might also involve friends 
friends, it might be that it's super helpful for a very good friend of the child to be there when this kid arrives in school. Or perhaps they've got a buddy or a mentor who might be happy to meet and greet when they arrive. It's kind of up to what works for the child, so talk to them. But there's various different people that you might bring in here who might be involved as part of that everyday routine. Um, and then how? Just think about what does that routine need to look like? Who needs to be involved? What's going to happen? Where will it be? Where should the child arrive? When are they going to arrive? Is it better for them to be a little bit earlier or a little bit later when it's quiet? And so on. So we just basically figure out what should this routine look like? What's optimal? And then we just do it again and again and again every day. Be prepared to revisit it because things might change over time. Or a child might say, do you know what? I thought it would be really helpful to go to X place, but I'd prefer now to go to Y place or I tried this and it didn't work or I tried this and it worked really well. So be prepared to revisit it, create a bit of a plan and then rinse and repeat. Okay, when it comes to making the routine work, we're going to think about three things. We're going to think about the where, the who and the what. Okay, so first of all, where can the child go? When they arrive as part of this daily routine, where can they go that feels safe? You don't have to have this child do the same thing that everyone else does. Maybe they don't like the noisy playground on arrival. Maybe their form room feels too loud. Maybe um, they need to go somewhere different. Identify with the child somewhere that feels safe and that is practically possible for you guys in school. Um, some children, my children included, find sitting with the uh, reception staff in the office can be a really nice place to go on arrival for a few minutes until they feel ready to engage. Um, if they're not going to go somewhere special, think about how the normal place where they would go, their form room, their classroom, the playground, wherever, might be able to feel a bit safer. So we might be thinking about different ways of reg regulating their feelings or thinking about how we can dampen noise, for example. So where are they going to go? Let's have an agreement about that. Who? Who can the child be with that will help them at the beginning of the day? Is there a particular adult who can meet and greet or be with them? Is there a friend who might get involved here who's happy to be with them or a buddy or a mentor? Maybe they um, are lucky enough to have a school dog in your school and they could go and be with the school dog for a few minutes to regulate. So who can be with the child um, or no one? And that's a valid choice too. It might be that the child says, I actually just want to be alone uh, for a few minutes at the beginning of the day, but proactively plan who's going to get involved here and make sure that that person is available to do this each day if possible. doesn't have to be for long, but it does need to be a commitment that is kept if it's made. And then what? What would the child like to do on arrival? What's going to actually motivate them to get into school? Is there an activity that they might engage in right away? Um, younger children might find that activities around play and art, for example, if you've got a child who's struggling to get into to, to nursery or, or primary school, um, then there might be something that they really, really like doing um, or a person they really, really like working with that's going to motivate them to get in. Think about an activity that's going to yeah get them in, bring them in, draw them in so that they can they can get started right away on something that makes them want to be here. Alternatively, we can think about activities that regulate. So if you've got a child who is arriving in a high state of anxiety um, where they are dysregulated, then we need to think about our regulatory activities. So that might be for sensory regulation. That might be for emotional regulation. These are like whole other topics for another day. But have a think about what works for this child to get them to a point where they are ready. We're going to think about regulation in a moment a bit more. And there we go. Almost like I wrote the slides, isn't it? So three is regulate your third R. Um, so we are going to do this because getting into school is one thing, but this is a big deal for the child. They might be very dysregulated at this point. They are in the building, but they are not in the building, kind of mentally. Physically here, mentally, absolutely wanting to run a mile. So uh, we need to think about who can support here. At the beginning, we may need to always have an adult uh, by the child's side in order to help them to co-regulate. But we'll find again with routine, with repetition, and as the child builds their skills in self-regulation, that we might not need to continue with that adult supervision over time. And that's a really good thing to aim for. The adult might continue to be there quietly in the background, scaffolding and supporting this if needed. Um, but a child who is able to self-regulate has really brilliant transferable skills. So this is a really, really positive thing to be able to aim for. 
And how do we do this? We're going to engage with those sorts of activities that might help to reduce the anxious thoughts and feelings that the child might be arriving at school with. So we'll have a think about what that might look like in practice next. So things we can try, we can use our share it, shelf it, shout it, shed it. Another one of my lovely alliterative ideas, which I hope you find helpful. Some of you say you do. So here the idea is we arrive at school with worries. We need to get ready for learning. We can try doing one or more of these four things. We can share it. So that might mean talking to someone about it. That might mean writing it down in a journal. That might mean just thinking about it with ourselves, kind of getting it into a way that we can name it uh, so that it is out there in the world. We can shelf it. This is about saying, I've got this worry. It's a really big worry. It really concerns me. I need to explore it. But right now I need to go into maths. So I'm going to take this worry and I'm going to shelf it and I'm going to make an appointment with that worry for later. I might worry alone. I might worry with an adult. One way that we can shelf it is to write it down and put it in a worry box or a worry monster and to give that to an adult for safekeeping and have a time when we're going to come back to it. You need to follow up on this if you do do it. If you say to a child, we're going to shelf this worry and we're going to come back to it, you need to actually do that. They need to know this worry will be come back to. It's surprisingly effective as a strategy. Um, we can shout it. So this is if a child's got a whole ton of energy inside them that needs to be worked through because they're feeling very, very anxious. They might need to physically work out that energy so it's not just about shouting though they might choose to shout or to scream into a pillow if you've got somewhere they can do that where it's not going to disturb and upset other people but they might do jumping jacks they might work out their energy in any one of a number of ways perhaps they'll dance perhaps they'll sing whatever works for them that gets that energy out so if they're like a coiled spring just be thinking how can we uncoil that spring so they're not going into a lesson where they're expected to sit still and focus and be calm feeling like they need to bounce off the walls with anxiety um, and then finally they might need to shed their worry so shedding a worry is about recognizing this worry that you've come into school carrying is not a worry for a child to bear this is an adult worry so I'll have that one please and it's about giving permission to a child to hand that worry over and for them to be able to trust that you will take care of this concern so that they can shed it, they can let go of it, they know that you've got it now and they no longer need to carry it. Other things you can do is to use your kind of favourite breathing or calming strategies to calm things down, to take control. So you might do something like your five finger breathing or your box breathing. I'll link out to all of these in the uh, blog post with additional resources. But anything that you found that works in the past with this child to calm things down, just do it every day on arrival to enable them to begin to take control. Remembering that in particular, our breathing strategies are super, super powerful because they send both top down messages and bottom up messages. So kind of brain messages, psychologically saying, okay, I'm in control. I'm taking control of this situation. This is okay. I can calm down. And bottom up messages from our actual sort of physiology, our brain, uh, our body rather begins to feel different as we calm the breathing down. We've got enough oxygen circulating around our body. So we begin to both psychologically and physiologically feel a bit more calmer and in control. And that's a really lovely kind of self-reinforcing positive cycle achieved purely through breathing. And the more that we practice it, the better we get at it. Um, and then finally, we might plan ahead for the day using our if then planning. Again, I'll link out to the video on that. So this is the idea. If there are worries, rather than dismissing or trivializing or minimizing them, we actually go, OK, well, let's think about today. Let's think about the worries that you have about today that you've brought with you. And let's think about what we'll do with each of those worries if they were to arrive. So if X happens, then you could Y. Um, and the child could do this for themselves. They might do it with a supporting adult. But the key thing here is rather than going into their lessons with all those anxieties about all these things that they're they're concerned about today we've addressed them so you might need to do that in quite detail at the beginning for our EBSA kids who might have found it really really hard to come in they might have concerns about a particular lesson particular times particular things plan ahead for them work out what they'll do in those situations this will include things like exit strategies if they're not managing anymore this might include revising the timetable for them and being a bit flexible there's a whole ton of stuff we might do again things for another day but actually looking at that day through their eyes with them and thinking about what are the things that are worrying them and what can they do if those things happen.
Okay, our three R's. We're thinking about the reception a child receives when they arrive. We're thinking about routine, doing the same thing every day to make it more possible for them to do it because things get easier the more times we repeat them. And we're thinking about how we can enable that child to regulate because they've got here, but now we need to get them ready for learning. Have a think together, pause the video, have a think about what is working well already. What are you doing that works here that you can share amongst the team or do more or apply to different children? What could you try? Any ideas that have come to you whilst you've been watching this or brainstorm? some things out together that you could give a go and then turn it into practical actions. What are you going to do tomorrow? Your best next steps are. Write them down, share them, commit to them. Actually do something please as a result of having done this mini training session. Okay, and then if you want to follow up, uh, A, go along to the blog where I'll share a whole bunch of different links, including the ones on the screen here, but a few things you might like. So first of all, my downloadable guide about supporting children who struggle to go to school. This has got loads of ideas for parents that you might share with them too, but there's just some really simple steps in here about those children who find it hard to come to school. So that might well be worth a read, might be worth a share with parents and carers. Work with them, not against them. You're all on the same team. Next, video about the anxiety hack using if then, which we discussed. You might find the video helpful and give you some ideas for making that work. You also get a little tour through the previous hairstyles of Pookie. I think this was the beginning of lockdown when we were growing out our hair, but it was still red. I miss the red. And then finally, listen, for those of you who love a little bit of podcast pookie, um, there are five ideas to help children who are struggling with school based anxiety within this podcast, which you might find helpful to listen to. They expand on ideas shared elsewhere, but I tend to say a bit more in the old podcasts and give you a few more examples. So hopefully helpful. I really hope that you found this session helpful and that there were some things in here that you felt able to take away and support your children who are struggling with school based anxiety. It's a really, really tough gig for them. And one thing just to remember is they are trying so hard. If you've got them there in front of you to try any of these things, then actually they've already for a massive battle just to be there. So even if they never make it into a lesson, just please recognize that. Let them know that you're really, really proud of them for trying. You will get there with them because you care and you will enable them to feel safe enough to try these things. Good luck and thank you so much for your hard work with these children.